Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll continue with greedy algorithms. Greedy algorithms are commonly used for optimization problems, where we typically go through a sequence of steps with a set of choices at each step. A greedy algorithm always makes the choice that looks the best at the moment. That is, it makes a locally optimal choice in the hope that this choice will lead to globally optimal solutions. Greedy algorithms are often implemented using recursion and are very efficient. In this lecture, we will show another optimization problem where a greedy algorithm produces an optimal solution. This example is the problem of scheduling several competing activities that require exclusive use of a common source, with a goal of selecting a maximum size set of mutually compatible activities. Suppose we're going to the Comic Con, and the conference is packed with fun activities running in overlapping times. We can only attend one activity at a time. Each activity X has a start time and a finish time. Once we decide to go to an activity, we need to participate and stay until it finishes. So the question is, how do we schedule so we can enjoy as many activities as possible? This is clearly an optimization problem where we want to maximize the number of mutually compatible activities we can attend on a day. For instance, in this example here, we can choose x1, x4, x6, or we can choose x2, x3, x4, and x6. Both sets consist mutually compatible activities. Now let's get a more clear picture on the constraints of this problem. First, selected activities must be compatible, meaning they cannot happen in overlapping times. Specifically, given two activities, xi and xj, we consider the starting time being inclusive and the finish time being exclusive. Xi and Xj are compatible if either of these two conditions are satisfied. Our goal is to select a maximum size subset of mutually compatible activities meaning all selected activities must be compatible pairwise. Please recall the fundamental principle of greedy algorithms. A greedy algorithm always starts by sorting the objects, but it can be a challenge to find the right sorting criterion. Back to our activity selection problem. How should we sort the activities? We can experiment with the different criteria and see how they work. First, we may sort the activities by starting time. Then we repeatedly choose the next activity if it does not overlap with the ones already chosen. Then for this example here, greedy algorithm would pick x1, and then that'll be the only activity we can choose. We know this is not the optimal solution since we can choose x2, and x3. Then we'll have two activities instead of one. So the algorithm will fail on this example. Next, how about sorting by activity length with the shortest activity first? Then the greedy algorithm only chooses x1 for this example. But we know choosing x2 and x3 would also be possible and is a better solution. So this algorithm fails on this example as well. What about sorting by activity length, longest first? The algorithm would pick x1 and will not be able to choose any further activities, but we know we can choose x2 and x3, and that's a better solution. So this algorithm fails on this example. So none of the previous attempts work. Finally, we hit upon another alternative. Sort the activities by finish time, earliest first. 
then we can repeatedly choose the next activity if it doesn't overlap with the ones already chosen. Using this idea, the greedy algorithm will pick x1 and then x3, x4, and x6. In fact, this is an optimal solution. Intuition tells us that this time the greedy algorithm works. Now again, the questions are, how can we formalize this idea and write an algorithm? What is its computational complexity? Can we prove its correctness? First, the implementation of this greedy algorithm. We sort all the activities based on their finish time from the earliest to the latest. Then we can pick the first activity, x1, and we can find the next compatible activity. We can do this by setting current time as x1's finish time. Then we can do a sequential search and find the next activity that starts no earlier than current time. Once we have found it, we add it to the selection and reset current time. This should seem really straightforward to you. So the next question is, what's the complexity of this algorithm? Sorting takes big O of n log n time, and the sequential search takes linear time. So overall, the entire algorithm has a complexity of big O of n log n. It is indeed quite an efficient algorithm. Now the fun part, proof of correctness. Again, we prove it using induction. The basis is when n equals zero. There's no activity to choose. Our greedy algorithm will give us an empty selection, and it is still an optimal solution. Our inductive hypothesis is that when we have k activities to choose from, our algorithm activity selection can find an optimal solution. Now we need to prove when there are k plus 1 activities, our algorithm activity selection can still find an optimal solution. When there are k plus 1 activities to choose from, our greedy algorithm provides a solution A that picks activities A1, A2, AT. Now we need to prove that A is optimal. Again, we assume there is an optimal solution, O, that picks activities O1, O2, OR. R should be no less than T. Similar to the proof for the road trip problem, we take two steps. First, we show that our greedy algorithm's first choice, A1, is safe. That is, there is an optimal solution that starts with A1. Second, we show that A is optimal. Recall our greedy algorithm sorts activities based on their finish time. And A1 has the earliest finish time. So we know O1 must finish no earlier than A1. O2 is compatible with O1 because they are from the same solution. So it must start no earlier than O1 finishes. Therefore, A1 should also be compatible with O2. Thus, O star, where we replace O1 with A1, should also be an optimal solution, since it has the same number of selected activities as O. This completes the first step. Now for the second step, based on the inductive hypothesis, we know for the reduced problem when the starting time is now set as when A1 finishes, our greedy algorithm provides an optimal solution, A2, A3, AT. So its cardinality must be greater than or equal to that of O2, O3, O R. Adding A1 to both sides will give us A's cardinality and O star's cardinality. Since O star is an optimal solution to the problem with K plus 1 activities to choose from, 
A is also an optimal solution when we have k plus 1 activities to choose from. Now this finished step 2 and completed the proof of correctness. Now let's see what happens if we came up with the incorrect greedy algorithm and tried to prove its correctness. Say we sort activities by their start time and come up with the greedy algorithm. Again, we use proof by induction. The basis and inductive hypothesis will be the same as what we have before. Now let's see the first step. We need to show that our greedy algorithm's first choice, A1, is a safe choice. A1 has the earliest start time. However, we won't be able to tell if A1 and O2 are compatible. We only know A1 starts earlier than O1, but we don't know for sure if A1 finishes earlier than O2 starts. So we won't be able to prove it, and thus this greedy algorithm is incorrect. Okay, a couple of exercise questions from the textbook for you to explore. Again, really make sure you understand what we discussed in the lecture and try to implement the greedy algorithm in Python. It really helps have a more solid understanding of how it works. That'll be all for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed this problem solving and algorithm design process. I will see you in the next lecture.